everyone. Welcome back to the second part of our artist writing series. Um, this is Alexandra Giordano. Again, sometimes some of you know me as Sasha Giordano. I am an adjunct professor of art history at multiple colleges on Long Island, and I'm also the communications director at Hofstra University Museum of Art. So if you watch the last series, uh, the video that I put together previously was about writing an artist's bio. And that's where you were really focusing on your background and your particulars to give the viewer a better understanding about what makes you a part of your art. And again, help you to understand your art in a better way um, because they feel like they know you a bit. What we're gonna focus on today is how to write a personal statement. And the focus there, I'm just gonna move my window so you can see this a little bit better. The focus here is that your personal statement is more about your work than yourself. So that's how it essentially differs. The bio is about you and this is really honing in and speaking about your work. So I have a quote here for you. An artist statement in a written is a, is a written description of your work that gives your audience deeper insight. It may include your personal history, the symbolism that you give your materials or the issues that you address. Your statement should include whatever is most important to you and your work. So again, you're going to maybe give a little bit of um, a little bit of yourself in it, but predominantly you're going to be speaking about your work. And this is going to be run kind of like a workshop and hopefully at the end of it, you'll understand how you would begin crafting that personal statement. I'm sorry, just jumped ahead, here we go. Um, this slide here is a reminder for you. And this is a reminder from the previous um, presentation that you wanna make sure that you are showing and not just telling uh, anything when you are writing. You wanna make sure that you are not um, kind of giving these big overarching statements, but instead you're giving these tiny kernels, these little breadcrumbs that the reader is either going to learn something really particular and important about you, or in this instance, is going to really understand details about your work. So th two things that I like to remember is this idea that you need to be specific show, don't tell, and you want to give seeds because after someone reads a piece, whether it's your bio or your artist statement, what we're talking about here, after they kind of string together all of these seeds that you've put together, they're going to get this big watermelon. So you don't want to start with these big overarching ideas, but you want to be really specific when you're writing your artist statement as well. So essentially, there are three types of statements really similar to your bio. There's going to be a one page artist statement, a one or two paragraph artist statement, or sometimes a 25 word statement. And again, just like your bio, this the shorter it is, the more challenging it can be. And just again, remember that your um, artist statement, just like your bio, it's a living document, right? It's something that changes um, with the body of work that you're presenting. So if you're presenting a certain few pieces of art um, to a specific exhibition with a theme in mind, then you may want to go back and rewrite your artist statement to kind of pull out those types of ideas and make sure there's a strong connection there. But we'll get to that a little in a little bit. An artist statement should be a visual image, essentially, for your reader. Um, they should read about the work and almost experience it as if they're looking at your portfolio. So even though it's a short piece of writing, your statement is not going to be pages and pages in length, although I'm sure you could go on about your work, after someone reads your artist statement, they should it should be like they're, again, opening up your portfolio and seeing what the work is about. So again, bio is about you, artist statement is about the work. So before we get into a little bit of like the workshop aspect that I have here, I did want to give you a little bit of a checklist. So here are some of the things that you want to make sure that you do when you're writing your statement. You want to write a com compelling statement, something that's very thoughtful. You want to develop a strong first sentence that clearly explains why you make art and what materials you use. Keep it as short as possible. This should be a supplement to your visual work and absolutely not your life story. That's why you make art, right? Your life it is essentially or often is played out in your art. Your bio is a place for you to talk about your background. 
but this is a real supplement to your visual work. So you wanna make sure that it's very compelling, very thoughtful, and really detail-oriented about the work. Do focus on topics that might not be apparent in your artwork. So it's specifically, let's say you work abstractly. Maybe I wouldn't know from looking at your art what is an influence for you. What themes do you focus on? What issues do you address? You can discuss the types of materials that you use or scale, for example. So again, if I'm looking at your artwork and I'm viewing it, of course, I'm going to be able to extract information from that. But what, what do you need to fill in the blanks with? And that's where your personal statement can kind of really be very helpful to someone who's viewing your artwork for an exhibition or a job, etc. In this instance, you do want to use the first person if needed, right? It's always best to kind of have a neutral voice in your writing that just kind of adds a level of sophistication. But in this instance, if you want to use I, me, or mine, this is where you would do it in an artist's statement. So again, the artist's bio is he or she, third person, artist statement, you can talk in the first person here. Now, some don'ts, some things that you wanna make sure that you absolutely do not do, is do not copy someone else's writing style. Now, when I talked about the artist bio in the previous workshop, you know, I did recommend go out and read some bios, right? Get a flavor for what you are drawn to. If you like concise writing, if you like flowery writing, and you can kind of do the same thing here. You can definitely go through and read examples of artist statements, but essentially come up with your own authentic voice. Do not you know, copy what you read. It will just come off as false and then it won't be as successful as you want it to be. Keep your language easy to read, all right? If it's too difficult, no one's going to read it. If it's too complicated, uh, people are gonna just kind of skim over it and not really understand what you're saying. Avoid pretentious language. So I know, I mean, I'm a real big fan of a thesaurus. I still use a paperback thesaurus, but your computers all have a thesaurus. And make sure that you are opening that thesaurus. If you have a word in mind and it just seems too complicated, um, go use the thesaurus and see if you can come up with a better word. And don't be repetitive, right? You wanna have variety in your language as well. Do not try to impress the reader with a lot of art terms or vocabulary. Don't use art speak, don't, don't, don't talk shop, right? Don't have jargon that's too much related um, to the art world specifically. When you write your personal statement, you want it to be about your work, the themes and the ideas and, and some other things we'll get to in a, in a few slides, but you also in a sense want it to be universal, right? It should be a, a universal document about your work. Don't announce what you're attempting to do explain what you've accomplished. And that goes back to the idea of show, don't tell, right? Don't start with this big watermelon of like, I am writing my personal statement. No, just lay it out in a creative, thoughtful way. And don't just give a physical description of your work, right? You don't wanna just say, I am a painter and I use these materials, etc. And I'll show you some examples at the end of this presentation. Again, I'm gonna ask you to don't be trite and avoid cliches. So when you're kind of sitting down, you can kind of read through those do's and don'ts. I always like to start that first writing, any project that I have, really approaching it like a brainstorming workshop. So make sure that you have your materials, right? Pen, pencil, paper, computer, how, whatever, whatever is the best way for you to kind of get a good flow with your writing. And the next thing you want to do is you want to collect images of your recent work. Now, you want it to be your recent work because more than likely this is going to be the work that you're submitting for any type of exhibition or competition um, that you're applying to residency, right? Because you want this to be recent work. And you want it to be work that's kind of, a, again, maybe part of a series that it really feels like it all kind of fits together and you would kind of submit this for an application. After you kind of go through your portfolio, try to hone in on one piece of work to start for, uh, to start writing about for this workshop. So choose one that you think maybe synthesizes a lot of your ideas. You can just go with your gut reaction. Like maybe there's a, there's a work of art in your portfolio that you're like, aha, I really hit the nail there. I got it. This speaks to my work. So kind of focus in on that one. And then I want you to just describe it. You know, again, pen, I'm a pen and paper person or actually pencil. I do all my writing in pencil. Just describe the work. And in this instance, I want you to do it quickly. 
okay? Don't worry about language. Don't worry about finding the right word. Just kind of get down your ideas about your work. You know, what are some of the words that you would describe? Think of adjectives, think of verbs, action words when you're making your art. And essentially, I start every writing project this way, and I know that this isn't very pretty, um, but I call this part throwing up. Just write, just write. This is probably going to be longer than what you're going to actually use. And do not delete any of this, because this will often be your roadmap. You can pick it apart, you can rearrange it, you can add to it, you can edit it. And I know I said this previously in the bio workshop as well, when you're writing, whether it's your bio or your artist statement, and you're in this throwing up, like I like to call process, sometimes you can just create the most beautiful sentences, right? Or things can just kind of flow right out. And maybe it doesn't make sense within the paragraph, but you might have some really good sentences that you can use um, in another edit, another edit or version of your writing. So save everything. But again, just kind of get through this process, get it out quickly, and hone in on that one work, hone in on that you know, focus in on that one work of art. And as you're doing this, as you're writing, you can then kind of start to focus in and start asking yourself some questions. So you're going to go through that brainstorming initial kind of throwing up and you're going to kind of get that almost kind of stream of consciousness type of writing because you know your work, you know your work better than anyone else. And when you're going through this process, be free and be liberated, right? Expose yourself when you're writing. So some other questions that you then can kind of touch upon is, what does your art look like? And again, you wanna think about size, shape, texture, light, objects, uh, relationships within the work of art. Be really descriptive here. What inspired this piece? Where does the work come from in you? And again, this is when the more honest you are and the more truth there is in your artist statement, the stronger the statement you will have. You can discuss your work from a conceptual, thematic, or, or emotional point of view. And you might have a leaning more towards one of these than the other. So again, you know yourself. If it's not emotional, don't make it emotional, right? If you're not really con thinking, thinking conceptually, then don't make it that. So just be honest and truthful um, and explain if you have any connections, if this art has any connections to any of these particular themes. Is there a central guiding idea? And again, you're kind of honing in on one work of art, but you've kind of chosen a work of art that you feel like synthesizes a lot of other pieces together. So is there some kind of central guiding idea? What materials do you use and why? What would be the best way to exhibit this work of art? You know, in what kind of setting and what kind of space would you think that this would be the, the most uh, the most successful way to view the work of art? And then how does it fit in the context of contemporary art? You know, you can kind of think of yourself in the 21st century uh, and other contemporary artists that are working this way, or do you use do you use some kind of materials or themes in your art that's actually kind of like predates it and makes a connection with like maybe 20 or 30 years ago, that's something interesting to kind of explore as well. Now here, you really want to identify yourself. And this is where you have to be careful because this is not, again, this is not your bio. You are looking at yourself in relationship to this particular body of work that you're writing about. So what words would you use to describe your work as an artist. And again, this kind of goes back to that initial writing prompt that I had given you where you're kind of throwing up. Um, what influences your work? Physical, intellectual, emotional, emotional, or conceptual. Whose work do you admire, right? Sometimes, you know, I know that there are certain artists that, you know, I see that artist and I really have a connection with that artist. And then when I'm making art, I kind of I kind of see that there's this marriage of ideas that taking place not copying but this you know is there a colorist that you admire is there someone who works with line that you really admire and when you look at your work you kind of see these really kind of these connections these family relationships almost like they're cousins to each other this is an interesting question to ask yourself what do you read see listen to outside of your discipline that influences your work 
anything philosophical, uh, scientific, historical? Do you have a political bent? Uh, is there film or music or poetry that you know really kind of comes out in your art or has a connection or is inspirational in your art? This is something really interesting to explore because again, this is kind of like giving a whole nother layer to experiencing your artwork. It might not be something that you had thought about you know, really previously. Another thing you want to kind of go through the list of, of describing and examining is where do you do your work? You know, what kind of space do you work in? Um, describe the space and how it might influence your work. You know, I've been to a lot of artist studios and there is definitely a connection that can be made with the geography, with the environment. Uh, are you working in an urban setting and how does that play out in your work? Are you in a rural setting? You know, are you working in a, in a complex where there are other artists working as well? And what type of community does that bring into your art? What kind of thought or care have you given to your workspace? I know some artists are really, really kind of the way that they clean up at the end of the night and the way that they set themselves up for the next day. That process is really kind of uh, very much a part of their work. So do you go through any kind of routines or rituals in your workspace that sets you up for work the next day, allows you to be more productive? Um, what are you working on right now? And, and what kind of materials and access do you have to create that kind of work? So really thinking about your work envir environment helps you think about your process. And then again, in turn, kind of resulting in that end product. And that's something to really think about when you're thinking about writing an artist's statement, because for some people, like this is it. This has a lot to do with their body of work. And you might read this and say, well, it really does it. My studio is my studio, I work there. Uh, I might play some music, but really I'm, I have more of a political bent or influence or, or maybe one of the other questions speaks to you more. But this is an interesting area to explore as it relates to your work. Another really important aspect to explore is describing your process. So I just touched upon that brief, you know, briefly in the, previous, um, in the previous slide, but what materials do you use? The elements, the surfaces, the methods, the equipment that surrounds you. And again, what, what do you have access to? Sometimes that comes into play here as well. Where does your inspiration come from? I know for me, um, there's something about oil paint right? The smell of oil paint, the, the feel of oil paint, um, the linseed oil, the flow of when that oil starts, you know, when that oil paint starts moving on, on the canvas. I have a real thing about my palette. Like I'm really particular about how I lay down the colors and, and how I can kind of borrow other colors, you know, that are, that as I kind of lay them out and blend my colors. So think about things like that. What is the impetus for the specific piece that you're writing about? Um, is there something in your process that like the painting that came or the sculpture or the environment or the photograph that came before this piece, how did that influence this piece, right? Is that a part, do you need to pull something, some of those ideas into your writing statement? What moves you to work, right? Motivation, inspiration. These are things that we all kind of struggle with, writer's block, right? Um, so when you are really in that moment and you kind of, everything is kind of, really like shifting into space and, and work is going well, what's happening in that moment? What kind of pushed you to kind of have all of the planets align that your process is really working? So what moves you to work? And what is your favorite part of the process? You know, um, is it the setting up? It is, is it the breaking down? Is it in the middle of it? Is it that moment when you're working where time disappears? and you're, it's just kind of flowing out of you. But you have to find your language, right? Your own language to describe these moments um, that take place in your studio. So really thinking about your process. You know, I know some artists that they're successful at night. You know, they don't get into their studios till eight o'clock at night and they work till two, three o'clock in the morning. Is that a part of your process? Is time of day a part of your process? So again, after you are, you know, after you go through all these questions, you're going to say, I, I have page, I have like three pages now. And again, that's when the editing process is going to come into play. But you really want to be thoughtful about these questions that I'm asking you. And again, you're not deleting any of the information that you're writing because this is going to help you 
put together your statement. And that leads us to our next slide, putting it together. How do you do this? Well, the first thing that I recommend is record yourself reading your answers out loud. You know, put on your computer, record yourself either visually or just audio, you know, an audio recording and hear how you speak about the work. You know, there's going to be answers that you kind of gloss over. There's going to be some of your answers are going to be dull and not important. So take notes while you're listening. And when your voice lifts and you or you have more that like you've written more about one particular area in this workshop, in this brainstorming workshop, pay attention to that because that's probably, again, speaking to your truth. That's the moment where the ideas about your artwork are really being articulated. So play it out loud, read, read it, and then play it back to yourself and take notes while you're speaking about your art. And then what you're going to start to do is synthesize these notes into your first draft. So typically what happens is as you go through each one of these sections, you're going to see there's one area in each one of these sections that again, you've really been clear and you've really kind of hit the nail on the head about your work. So kind of pull out from each section, these areas that, um, that are more clear and have greater clarity. After you kind of have pulled those pieces together, you want to kind of start thinking about putting that statement together, having that strong first sentence about your work. And again, I have examples that I'll show you in a moment. Um, sometimes thinking outside the box for a writing statement, right? It doesn't have to be so like, this is my work and this is how I work. You can kind of come up with a statement that is about your studio and then the rest of the paragraph kind of falls in step from that. So have people read your first draft and it should be people who know you. So when they're reading it, it almost operates as a mirror. They're reading this short artist statement and they're saying, yep, you've got this right. So really lean on the people who know you, who know your workspace. And I always like to say, you know, art is community. So reach out to yours, right? This is a really important document that you're writing and you wanna make sure that you're giving some really clear language to describe yourself. What you can also do is ask a professional to edit your work. Fees can be as low as like $50 for a first edit and a first read. Um, you can seek assistance from your library because sometimes libraries will hire someone, they'll be, have someone on staff or they'll even hire a professional to do one-on-one -on -one se you know, sessions with you where they're kind of really going through your piece and editing it. But of course you want to edit it yourself and make sure that it's clear um, in the way that you're describing your work. So keep it direct. Um, you don't want to lose your reader, right? You don't want it to become too complicated. And here's some good advice that you can follow, a really good checklist for you. Keep your sentences short. If you have a particularly long sentence, ask yourself, is this really two sentences? And this is something that I see often, right? I think that, again, especially when we're, we're so invested, right? Like this is this is our work and this is a statement that you're making about your work and we can be overly descriptive and we can go on and all of a sudden you have this run on sentence. So if you notice that you have a very long sentence, where's the period? Can you make that two shorter sentences? If you have a long sentence, another thing to think about is bookending it with two short sentences. I even tell my students in some of my writing classes, I, I love a short sentence. A short sentence can be succinct, it can be clear, um, kind of honing in on maybe Hemingway's type of writing style where it's just really clear and cutting it down to like the points that you want to make. So if you're too flowery and your sentences are too long, you know, that can be problematic in who's ever reading your, your artist statement. So think about using some short sentences within your paragraph. Develop a flow to your writing. And again, once you've kind of really finished this artist statement, I want you to read it out loud. If it sounds too wordy, if it sounds awkward, then it probably is, right? And you can kind of, if you're fumbling over your words as you're reading it, then you need to kind of go back and, and rewrite it. Again, remember, shorter is better, right? The shorter that you you can kind of keep your artist's statement the better and edit, edit, edit. I always like to remind people, you know, that we take a lot of pleasure and joy in looking at the sketchbooks of artists, right? Like you can look at Leonardo's sketchbooks, you can look at Michelangelo's sketchbooks and the list goes on. 
And when we look at those sketchbooks, um, we see mistakes, we see ideas that grow, we see something that might have gone off in one direction really kind of come back and then manifest itself in a really different way in that end product. So the idea that you arrive at a masterpiece, you arrive at a successful artist statement is the same type of thing. And that's that editing process. You know, you might go through three, four, five drafts before you kind of get to that artist statement that you feel like is, is really kind of very authentic and, and describes your work in a good way. So don't, don't get frustrated with the process. And again, don't throw anything away because no doubt you'll have to write an artist statement maybe for a different project and you'll have a nice body of work to pull from. You'll have some writing to pull from, but make sure that you are editing your work really carefully. So here are some examples. This is one from a jeweler. Um, Poppy is my fun and clever alter ego. It's a line of jewelry that doesn't take life too seriously. The glass and sterling rings are my invention and are unique in that they stretch to fit most everyone. Poppy adds a splash of color to jeans or an extra spark to ignite a little back black dress. Heck, it'll even brighten up a trip to the grocery store. If nothing else, it's a statement. Poppy laughs, Poppy flirts, Poppy screams. Poppy says it all without you saying a thing. And if you kind of look at the language that's used here, it is painting a picture. It's creating a visual scene of what does that jewelry look like. And again, in, sh in showing this to you without the picture of the artwork, I want you to think about the visual images that come to your mind as you read the language. And one thing to keep in mind with the artist's statement is that you want to wet the whistle of whoever is reading. There's a cliche for you that you should not use in your writing, um, but you want to really entice the person who's reading your work. What does this work look like? I have an idea. I, I, I feel like I've just cracked open that portfolio. Now I really want to see the work. And that's part of the goal of the artist's statement. So that's one really good example of a jewelry worker. For a sculptor, many people take great comfort in the bathroom towels being the same color as the soap, toilet paper, and tiles. It means there is a connection between them and an environment of order. Home is a place not only of comfort, but of control. This sense of order, in whatever form it takes, acts as a shield against the unpredictability of lurking chaos of the outside world. My work is an examination of the different forms this shield takes and the thinking that lies behind it. I use domestic objects as the common denominators of our personal environment, altering them is a way of questioning the attitudes, fears, and unwritten rules which have formed that environment and our behavior within it. I mean, this is, again, I think I'm, I'm hope that I'm, examples I'm giving you is that you're having these short paragraphs that immediately, immediately bring you into a visual space. And what this sculptor is doing here is having you first connect with the ideas of home, the ideas of order in a home, and then kind of pulling that into um, his work and, and what's important to that artist. So I also want you to notice um, in this writing example, the artist uses my, I, right? So you can use first person here. The artist uses this in the second paragraph, right? So not starting off the first paragraph by saying my work, but first creating a visual picture about the theme about the conceptual ideas in their work. And again, kind of amplifying that in the second paragraph. So again, you might, you might have not suspected artist statements to look like this, right? Because they're not describing a specific work of art. They're not listing materials directly. They're creating short paragraphs that show and don't tell what this body of work is about. And again, creating or enticing the reader to want to know what that work is, what does it really look like? And want to maybe touch the work and see the work and really feel the work in a particular environment. That's the function of the artist's statement. And just one more, um, this is from a silkscreen artist. 
I like it when a place has been around long enough that there's a kind of tension between the way it was originally designed to look and the way it looks now, as well as tension between the way it looks to whoever is caring for it and the way it looks to me. Trouble is the kinds of places I find most appealing keep getting closed or torn down. What do I want to say with my art? Celebrate the human, the marks people make on the world. Treasure the local and small scale, the eccentric, the ordinary. Whatever is made out of caring. Respect what people have built for themselves. Find the beauty in some battered old porch or cluttered human scale storefront while it still stands. And this is just such a thoughtful piece, right? Because this artist, again, is not necessarily listing all of the materials or some of the questions, you know, that you kind of went through. But after going through that whole process, this artist really arrived at the idea of authenticity of old things, respecting spaces. And what would you expect their work to look like if you, you know, after reading this? You know, what would it, what would it feel like? What kind of texture would be in the art you know, of the silkscreen artist. And again, I'm doing this deliberately, right? You re go back and reread these three statements and think about the visual images that are created by using words. And that's what you wanna do with your artist statement. It can be outside the box. It can be a poetic piece. You know, you can use alliteration in your writing, thinking about using the same letter a few times within a sentence or a paragraph to kind of create a flow or a theme to it. You can ask questions, right? Um, as you see here in this example. This artist does start right away with, I like it when a place has been around for a long time. But that first sentence, I like it when a place has been around for a long time, that's the theme, that's the roadmap, right? This entire artist statement is about respecting people's spaces and how um, the age of a location adds to you know, its beauty and the experience. So I hope that these three examples kind of help you develop a, again, a roadmap for you um, for how to write your artist statement. But just remember that you, all of the things, all of the questions that you answer in that workshop, they are your roadmap, but let your art be your North Star right? Let that really be the guiding light for what your artist statement is about. Be truthful and be authentic. And again, if I can just underscore here, the three that I showed you are relatively short, but really kind of, again, honing in on that, that idea of seeds. These are all seeds that you're looking at, breadcrumbs that create a, a real amazing picture of each artist's work of art. So lastly, like whatever language you use, you want those words to paint a picture of your work and what is deeply inherent and important to your work. And again, it's really important to remember that um, people will look at your art and they will, you know, art is amazing because it meets us where we are, right? Like you have a voice and you have an idea and you have a message in your artwork, but you also have an audience and your art meets us where we are. So your artist statement really stands as a supplement to that. What do we really need to know that is important and will help us better understand the body of work? And again, that differs from the artist's bio because how does that help us understand our work, your work through knowing you? So hope that that makes sense. Um, and I wish you the best of luck writing your writing, working on your writing statement. And um, I wish you the best of luck on any project that you're working on right now. Hope that, hope that helped out. Have a good day, everyone.